boys and girls, man and woman. It all went so well. I have a few things that I want to talk about, so I figured I kind of podcast this as I did in some recent videos. If you like this, then turn sure, subscribe and give a like. But let's talk about what really happened. Now where to start? Let's start with the gas mining. Now the first feeling um, of going out and looking for something new and fresh was great. I did head into low sec with my carpenter and I found my first gas. It was of course a mix of gas and materials but still it was a nice addition to low sec you and no sec. Weed in there. I would think that low sec would be enough since in no sec you still get it everywhere just like sand. But it would be nice to have gas in only low sec exclusively. But it's all of course depended on the need of gas. If we need a shit ton of it, then I'm sure it will be fine. Still it was a good feeling and I took my venture and I target mined the gas. This actually turned out to be better than the coveter, though this might not be the case later on when the prices have settled. I still think that low sec mining will pay better than the high sec in the end and if so then this is a good thing. We all knew that the prices for gas would not stay the same and that they probably are very very high. But they do feel a purpose. Now low sec mining even with 10% of the value that has been given it's still better isk than the high sec. And this is of course better if you're in a venture and target mine the gas. But of course you will make more isk mining in a covetor in low sec than in high sec. So this kinda makes gas better to mine if you're an alpha. Now the prices will spike and dip a lot now before it's actually used. But depending on the amount needed here in the future seems like low sec target mining is more lucrative than high sec mining. I mined personally about a million of this C50 gas and I plan on building some of those polymers with that. We talk about the specific cruiser issues later but we start with the dangerously scarce mineral issue that we would have if these new ships wouldn't been spawned out of thin air. But so far 99% of the ships existing has not been built. I know this is just temporary but on day one there was like 10 Sino Sea outside Yida and like 30 Navy battleships being traded. Yeah, it was a nice scene. But imagine if we would have been building all of this. That would have been a crisis for a few days. Like even weeks. But a good one. Minerals would have been used up. And faction cruisers and striker battleships would have gone missing for a time. Not a big deal since this is what the game needs. And we would have paid for Nekti's long time issues with this scarcity of items. But the game would have been healing. The market would have slowly been stabilizing and prices would have been good again. Instead we have another crisis today. We have the crisis of Plex. The game is now bleeding with all its broken bones. Helpless? Cause Netis is not SOE. Netis is like humanity. That time after time make the wrong decisions. Cause it's all dependent on money. And not until the world starts burning we actually start to change. This issue with Plex we got now is the reason of two main things. The first reason is that to get stuff quick in this game you can pay boxes with Plex. The second reason is that AUR is more worth than Plex. Yeah you might think but hey AUR is traded at 1 on 1 ratio with Plex. Yeah sure it is. But the boxes for AUR is vastly superior to the boxes of Plex. So it is kind of stupid to convert it all. And on top of this. Netis back a few patches ago made a terrible mistake. The stupid plex limitation they added. Well now the plex whalers cannot up the plex prices anymore. So I guess that's a good thing. No it's not a good thing, it's a stupid solution. This is the very issue we have today. And this issue finally reveals the state of the game. Today no one wants to sell their plex for the current value. Because the plex is more worth in AUR. So buying plex only goes to boxes and not on the market. So the plex value today is actually higher than what Netis wanted to be. So there is no plex on the market. And those with plex will only sell it when it's close to AOR price. Which is never. So why even use plex? Those who have plex today is using it where it's suited the best. And as long as plex is below at least 5 million a plex it's not gonna happen. If we calculate the price for the AOR value then plex is around 7 million. 7 million. You see how far gone the values are? So what happens now? Alphas can't get Omega. Omega players who can afford Plex can't stay free to play. You think it's a problem? 
It sure is. Let me explain how bad this is. This is so bad that Nettis have to fix it or the game dies. Or if it doesn't die, it's going to be played by players who don't sell stuff, who don't farm stuff, who don't build stuff and don't use ISK because AUR gets them all in a box. It will be played by people who don't care about losses because they're paying a lot of money which means that they can refund their ship and players who don't care to leave this game to swipe for another. And honestly, what are good dedicated players supposed to do? Even if we do stick around, we will not find any PvP, we will not find any buyers, then our point is none. So unless this was their idea all along, to remove the plex, which I doubt they are in for two solutions. And I bet that they are feeling this impact as we speak. Either they can release the threshold on the plex and watch the plex being sold at 7, 8, maybe even 9 million each before it settles somewhere at 6 and 7 million. Really showing everyone the state of the game or they can make some drastic changes to the game. Now stuff that would help would be something like no insurance for capital ships or change the whole insurance. Check my insurance videos for more details on that one. They can move the gas from Nolsec so that alphas can start with mining gas in Losec, giving new players a reason to play, as well as fixing all the stuff that we've been asking for, less isk and more mineral demand for industry, you know yada yada yada. You guys know everything. It's been talked about so much right now. I also got videos on those changes as well if you can't get enough of my voice. But what will Netties do? I am a bit afraid that they will let the plex go to those numbers. Because they really don't care a lot for alphas. And today the plex is a waste material, literally, from AUR. So there is no incentive to invest in it. AUR is the king. But as humanity, there is always the chance that this is the tipping point for the game. This might just be the problem that makes Netties understand. This might be the problem that the game has been waiting for. But let's leave that for a bit. What do you think about the cruisers? Now the clear winner is the fiend with great tank signature and resist speed and DPS. But yeah, as soon as Netis removes that extra high slot, then you know the DPS will go back to where it should be. It's a real beauty on the inside. Its predecessor, the Phantasm, with its skins and nano cores, still rule the appearance war. The Sailors and the Chameleon have about 17 seconds cooldown on its cloak. So it's like a good cloak, but it's not a covered ops cloak. I think it kind of misses the point. But the Sailors is a nice ship with its minimum 17k web bonuses and DPS mode with some tracking. Not too shabby. The Chameleon have the electronic resist and the electronic bonuses. It's like a strong healer that somewhat cloaks and harasses others. It is quite strong. We have the Adrestia who's missing the high slot. And I'm not sure how they call this faster than the Vigilant. I, It kind of have the same base speed. It does tank great, but the disruptor and web bonuses is just as the vigilant. But the high slots here is what really bothers me. And it won't be fixed until next week, because it's no big deal. What about the navy ships? Are they really good? And as we thought, but didn't hope, they are the upgraded strikers. They are of course not the low tier battleships that we were hoping for. You know the battleships that they alluded to when they said that lower tech players could fly battleships. Nevertheless, these ships are good. They're very good. So, today the reason to use a striker is of course if you can't afford a navy or if you need a striker in order to build a navy when this event is over of course. Which honestly I think can't be soon enough. Regards to the Capital Science C, I have heard mixed feelings. I don't have one myself so if you would like to donate one I love the silence that follows that statement. Anyway, if you do, I do something fun with it, giving you my thoughts. Maybe when I reach 3000 subs, I will let my kid fly with it in Nolsec. But I can't afford to invest in one and have my giveaways and my events for you guys. I just can't. I mean, it's not like I'm supported by Netis. They even think that I'm a hostile player. And that's weird, because I think I'm one of the kinder Eve Echoes creators out there. Now, not to toot my own horn, or stroke my own beard, or make my own bed, I'm a pretty nice guy. Unless you're red. As Netties are! But yeah, my general feeling is that the Scion C is too powerful for high sec. So unless we get like high sec cap anomalies, then I don't think this will bring in more isk than a regular 
old dusty vindicator. And since we basically need to pay real money to get the sand sea somewhat cheap, NetEase now is going to celebrate this, which is weirdly stated by NetEase. So 24 hours after this patch, they started a tournament, which is of course something we always want. And sure, the prizes is a sand sea and some more stuff. I think the number one prize is three sand sea, and it goes down from that. But this tournament of course have no limitation to ship levels. So the frigate pilots, the cruiser pilots, the battleship pilots are not really needed. It's a 30 versus 30 and I bet those who participate will use dreads, carriers and sound seas. It's a, a tournament for the biggest ships in New Eden. Later this year we will of course get the super carriers and the titans. So we can expect a tournament then as well. But yeah, Iveco Science Sea Cup Corporation Clash Tournament Registration! Join the Science Cup Corporation Class Tournament, lead your corporation to battle for glory and win the grand prize. It sounds fun for those who can afford to swipe. I cannot participate in this one and make videos of it because I don't have a Science C. But I'm pretty sure that it is a fun event and I wish good luck to everyone who participates. Regards to the other issues that we've faced, um, Netis have fixed the issues that some modules could not be activated. But if this persists, then try to log out and log back into the game. If the issue is still there, then uninstall all the modules and the nanocore and reinstall them. You don't have to change the modifications on the nanocore. Regards to the changes for the destroyers, this was well needed. Some of those are actually a bit nasty. I will let you guys find out which one I'm referring to. So yeah, this is a good event that I honestly think is going to have some serious implication to not only the game, but to Netis as well. And I see you guys again.